Today, I'm going to talk about namespaces in Linux. Namespaces enable creating an abstraction of a particular global system resource, and make it appear as a separated instance to processes within a namespace. Several processes from different namespaces can use the same resource simultaneously without creating a conflict. Changes made to the global resource in one namespace are visible to the processes which are members of that namespace, but are invisible to other processes outside the namespace. The kernel provides process isolation by creating separate namespaces for processes. It's one of the vital ingredients required for operating system virtualization, and creating a container in Linux. Since container in Linux is also a process, and its isolation is achieved by using namespaces, you can observe frequent use of the word container in this video. Assume that the container is created with the respective namespace in that context. The namespaces present in Linux are Network namespace IPC namespace C group namespace Mount namespace PID namespace user namespace and UTS namespace the system calls or APIs used for namespaces are clone set NS unshare and IOCTL clone creates a new process set NS allows the calling process to join an existing namespace unshare moves the calling process to a new namespace IOCTL contains various operations to discover information about namespaces Network namespaces provide isolation of the system resources associated with networking. Thus, each network namespace has its own network devices, IP addresses, IP routing tables, slash PROC slash net directory, port numbers, and so on. It allows a container created with network namespace to use separate virtual network stack, loopback device, and process space. You can view the different network settings by executing the IP address command on the host and inside the namespace. In this example, you can notice that, similar to a physical or virtual machines, network namespace A and network namespace B are assigned different IP addresses. Mount namespaces isolate the set of file system mount points seen by a group of processes. Thus, Processes in different mount namespaces can have different views of the file system hierarchy. Within a mount namespace, the mount and new mount system calls cease to operate on a global set of mount points. Instead, their operations affect just the mount points created inside the mount namespace. In this example, you can notice that, root mount point in the host namespace points to the device SDA, whereas in container namespace it points to the device overlay FS. Similarly, the mount point PROC points to respective PROC pseudo file system of the mount namespaces. When a new mount namespace is created, it gets a copy of all the mount points of the process which creates it. Typically, the namespaces are created by the unshare system call. The process namespace is called master namespace, and the namespace cloned by the process is called slave namespace. With mount propagation, we can have control over the propagation of the mount point changes occurred in the master namespace to the slave namespace, and vice versa. These mount point changes are also called events. Mount propagation is of four types, shared, slave, private and unbindable. In shared propagation, both master and slave namespaces propagate the events to each other. In slave propagation, master namespace propagate the events to slave, but slave does not. In private propagation, both master and slave namespaces do not propagate the events to each other. In unbindable propagation, a mount point cannot be the source for a bind mount operation. When a new namespace is created, by default its propagation would be private. To get the propagation inherited to clone namespace from master namespace, the option, propagation unchanged should be used with unshare command. With mount propagation, for example, an optical disk device that is mounted in master namespace can be automatically seen in its slave namespaces. PID namespaces isolate the process ID number space. In other words, processes in different PID namespaces can have the same PID. Each PID namespace or a container created with it, 
has its own init process with PID1 that manages various system initialization tasks. From the point of view of a particular PID namespace instance, a process has two PIDs, the PID inside the namespace, and the PID outside the namespace on the host system. In this example, PID5 is a child process of PID2 outside the namespace, but becomes PID1 inside the namespace. PID namespaces can be nested, a process will have one PID for each of the layers of the hierarchy starting from the PID namespace in which it resides, through to the root PID namespace. A process can see only processes contained in its own PID namespace and the namespaces nested below that PID namespace. Each PID namespace has its own slash PROC pseudo file system. One of the main benefits of PID namespaces is that containers can be migrated between hosts while keeping the same process IDs for the processes inside the container. User namespaces isolate the user and group ID number spaces. In other words, a process's user and group IDs can be different inside and outside a user namespace. The most interesting case here is that a process can have a normal unprivileged user ID outside a user namespace while at the same time having a user ID of zero inside the namespace. This means that the process has full root privileges for operations inside the user namespace, but is unprivileged for operations outside the namespace. In this user namespace hierarchy, the first user namespace which is the initial user namespace of the host, maps all the user ID range from 0 to 65,533. The user namespace at level 1 maps UID range 1000 to 5999 of level 0 namespace to the range 0 to 4999 inside it. Similarly, Level 2 namespace maps the UID range 1000 to 1499 of level 1 namespace to the range 0 to 499 inside it. It can be nested to maximum of 32 levels. UTS namespaces isolate two system identifiers, node name and domain name. In the context of containers, the UTS namespaces feature allows each container to have its own host name and NIS domain name. This can be useful for initialization and configuration scripts that tailor their actions based on these names. The name UTS is derived from Unix time sharing system. In this example, you can notice that, two different namespaces have different host name and domain names while the actual host name in the global namespace can be entirely a different one. IPC namespaces isolate certain inter-process communication resources such as system VIPC objects and PISIX message queues. A process or group of processes in an IPC namespace or a container created with IPC namespace have their own shared memory, semaphore, and message queues. This means, two or more containers can create shared memory segments and semaphores with the same name, but are not able to interact with other containers' memory segments or shared memory. Each C group namespace has its own set of C group root directories. These root directories are the base points for the relative locations present in the corresponding records in the slash proc slash pid slash c group file. When a process creates a new c group namespace, its current c groups directories become the c group root directories of the new namespace. This applies both for the c groups version 1 hierarchies and the c groups version 2 unified hierarchy. The information about a particular namespace of a process can be obtained from the subdirectory named after the namespace present under slash proc slash pid slash ns directory. So far we have discussed about, how the resource isolation specific to a process is achieved in Linux using namespaces. Now let's move on to a relevant isolation concept called jails. ACH root on Unix operating systems is an operation that changes the apparent root directory of a process and its children. New root can be any sub-directory in the root file system. Search paths, relative directories etc. are confined to new root directory of the process. The processes run in this modified environment cannot access the files outside the new root directory tree. Hence it is called a jail or ch root jail. CH root system call create a new process and points the process file system root to new directory. In this example, you can notice that, CH root point the root to the subdirectory Ubuntu root OS, 
but new root is not detached from the actual root file system. Since it is just a root pointer change, a process can outsmart the ch root system call and escape the jail. Jails in Linux can also be created by using a more efficient system call, pivot underscore root. Pivot underscore root system call detaches the new root from the root file system and attaches it to the current process as root directory. Pivot underscore root command with mount namespace addresses the escaping ch root concerns. In this example, you can notice that, new root directory Ubuntu root OS is completely detached from the actual root file system. Here you can see, how ch root system call is used to create a system image, and pivot underscore root system call with mount namespace is used to make root file system of a container. Hope that helped you. Thank you.